Hey friends, welcome! My name is Shada Campbell and I'm an artist and YouTuber. I make art tutorials encouraging the artists in all of us. I want us all to have an artistic practice every day. It's just fun. Now this is video two in a three-part watercolor series and today we're gonna chat about watercolor techniques. When you understand the different watercolor techniques, you can play and you can be creative not only with what you paint, but how you paint. So let's chat about techniques. In order to explore some popular watercolor techniques, we'll create a fun little practice page in our sketchbook. Today I'm working in a little Strathmore watercolor sketchbook. It has cold pressed 140 pound watercolor paper and I have the Aquafine watercolor set from Daler Rowney as well as a number eight long round brush. I've used washi tape to create this little grid and it's gonna make for a nice clean layout. Once the paint dries, we can peel that tape away. Okay, let's get started. The first technique that we're going to explore is wet into wet. Now what I'm doing is using my long round brush to just lay down a clear wash. So just water, I've wet the paper. Then I'm going to take a bit of blue pigment and release it into the wet area. So this is what we call wet into wet. When you release wet pigment into water or other wet pigment, it can move in really beautiful, organic, and uh, natural ways. You can see the pigment is moving out into the wet area. There are so many fun things you can do with this. I recommend doing a whole sketchbook practice page of just wet into wet with different colors and varying degrees of wet washes. Just see what you come up with. For the next square here, we're keeping it similar. We're going to do wet color into color. So I'm laying down a blue wash, very nice wet paint. I'm going to fill in the entire square. And then we're going to do a similar technique here. We're going to do wet color into color. So I have a little bit of magenta and I'm going to release the magenta pigment into the wet blue wash. Now mine had already started to dry a little bit, so I'm not getting that same burst and release of color, but it's still going to move in that um, very fluid manner. And again, that's part of the practice is seeing, okay, if the wash isn't as wet, the paint doesn't move quite as much versus if it's very wet. So play around with that and see what you come up with. Our third square, we're going to try wet on dry. This is an important technique to incorporate into your watercolor paintings because it allows you to be very precise. So what I'm going to do here is I've put down a green wash and we're just going to let it dry completely. While it dries, I'm mixing up a darker green paint and then we'll go back to our grid and we'll try the wet on dry technique. It doesn't take very long for a wash to dry. That one I think was about five minutes, not even five minutes. And I'll pick up a little of the dark green in my number eight round brush and you can see here, when I put that tiny little delicate line, it doesn't move, there's no fluid movement of paint. When you put wet paint on dry paper or dry paint, it does not move. It will move out and burst out into wet areas, but of course not into dry areas. So that allows you to layer your watercolor paint and make very detailed, uh, precise elements. Here I'm just doing a little leaf and berries just to show that your painting can be very detailed and precise, although of course it can be very fluid as well, depending on technique. Okay, let's move on to our next one. We're going to try some blooms. So I am mixing up a little bit of yellow paint and once again, we're going to place a wash inside of our little tape square. So I just did a yellow wash there. And then this one, we don't want it to dry. We're, um, I'm just gonna add a bit of darker yellow so you can really see these blooms and then I'm going to rinse out my brush I've washed it completely and I'm going to pick up just some clean water there's a little bit of paint in that water but otherwise it's clean and we're going to release water into the wet pigment and you can see as I release water let me get a really big good drop there we go it sort of bursts out and we get almost like this crystal or snowflake effect Blooms are great for incorporating into a sky as clouds or water. Of course, how you use these techniques is totally up to you. 
Next up, we're going to try lifting. This is something that I always do or often do in combination with my blooms. So once again, I'm going to lay down a wash of paint. I'm just using a little bit of magenta here and I'll fill in the square. And then once I have laid down my wash, I'm going to clean my brush, rinse it really well, blot it dry to remove any excess moisture. And then we come back over here to our wet wash and all we have to do is press those bristles against the paper and we actually start to lift some of the pigment. Again, this would be great for clouds, for painting water, trees. Understanding these techniques is going to make you a much more creative artist because you can incorporate them into all of your paintings. But you can see I can make some really interesting marks there and almost erase some of my paint. So it's actually good for fixing mistakes too. Then our last technique, we're going to try a little dry brushing. Here I'm using my flat wash brush. I've got some pigment and I'm blotting it on the paper towel. So I, I want to have a minimal amount of pigment and you can see I just kind of try to pick up a little bit of the paper texture. I'm using very, very little pigment and uh, allowing lots of the paper to show through the paint. This one is great for shading and for adding texture to your piece. Now you have an understanding of six different watercolor techniques. Understanding the techniques can help you to be a more creative artist and incorporating these into your artwork is just a lot of fun. I've removed all my tape. I'm going to use a fine liner to just put some labels in here because I like order and labels and it just looks cute. And then that's it, we're all done. Thanks for watching. If you haven't seen the first video on supplies, make sure to watch that and look out for the next video where we put all of this into practice and get painting.